Um, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Nawa. Uh, usually, I have very interesting backgrounds, but today I just have a, a white background. Um, I don't know why, but I just have a white background today. I am part of the um, grassroots change makers uh, team or revolution, as we like to call it. And so in the next uh, 20 minutes, I'll be sharing with you a quick background of the reasons why we created um, the grassroots solidarity revolution and what we have done and what we have learned so far. And if you have any comments, please do not hesitate to write them in the chat, um, in the chat box, uh, just throw them in there. It would be very important for us to, to um, look at some of those uh, uh, comments that you have over the same. I think it's, it's very important for us to uh, engage and interact. Uh, the team or the members of, of the grassroots solidarity revolution uh, will be responding to some of the questions that you have and some of the comments um, those that I will not be able to get to at the end of the meeting, they'll be responding um, through the, the chat box. Um, Yesenia, I hope you are ready with my slides so that you are moving with me because I'm not um, controlling it here. And then, yeah, so it'd be good for you to just uh, move with me. Cool. Um, so, so obviously, for those of you that um, have made it for this meeting, um, again, thank you very much for taking time off your your busy, very busy um, schedule to be part of this uh, uh, meeting. It means so much to, to me and the team, and um, we appreciate the, the support of you attending this meeting. So what exactly is the, is the, is the uh, grassroots uh, solidarity revolution? Um, so to just, to just uh, break it down to you in, uh, in uh, proper detail, so one of the things that we, we, we have come to understand is that uh, grassroots activists have limited access to funding, and, and this is a very big problem. Um, we all know that uh, this is an issue, especially those of us that are working in the, in the front lines. When it comes to the issues of grassroots uh, activists and funding, it's a very big issue. And so we say that um, beyond a, a, a asking for grants, there's also asking for more grants, and there are many other problems that just range with the work of, 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 of grassroots uh, activism. So there was need to diversify um, where we find or how we, we get access to some of these uh, resources that, 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 that we have and build relationships um, with donors and as well as allies and even just amongst uh, activists themselves. Uh, the relationship should not just be limited to being one of a funder and, 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 and a funder, it must extend to other aspects of, of the relationship. So the journey of the, the uh, grassroots solidarity revolution began in January, 2021. Um, and we were all gathered with the question of how can we drive more resources and take care of the grassroots, seeing that we have all these problems in terms of resourcing. Um, and so uh, 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 in our, our coming together, we come together from, we came together from different uh, countries I'm sure as we are going, we'll be able to, to explain who is part of, of the team. But the process began in January 2021, and it has been a very um, challenging yet fulfilling uh, process for us to get to where we are now and even hope to get to, to another, another uh, space. So using our collective intelligence, our experiences and the frustrations, the different um, um, activists, we started thinking about the potential solutions and agreed that there was need to create true change that would transform the system everywhere, not just in one country, not just with one donor, not just with one enabler, but with, with everyone that is involved um, in the wake of changing this world using uh, grassroots uh, actions. So uh, is my slide there? Ah, cool. So when it came to the, 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 the discussion that we, we had, one of the key things that we had come to understanding is that the solution needed to start with building better relationships, uh, the communities of social leaders, change makers and donors. Um, and it was about building a trust, a mutual understanding and learning and having spaces for healing and co-creation between activists and donors. Um, and it's important to reduce and eliminate the poor quantity and quality of resources available for progressive social activists and human rights defenders so that we eliminate um, the isolation, the stigma, the poor relationships, 
and just that, that perpetuate the system and structures of inequality and injustice. So before we even talk about doing the work out there, it must speak to the work in ourselves as grassroots uh, uh, activists and even the donors and enablers. What relationships do we share with them? Is it just about, uh, 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 is it just about issues of, of, of there is a grant, apply, your M and E aspect and whatnot, and then it ends there. There's really no relationship in, in seeing behind the face behind the grant and the face behind the work. So there was need to build those relationships, not as organizations, but as individuals, activists, connecting with the spaces that work in, in, in enabler organizations. So when we, 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 we thought about connecting, uh, we're not saying about connecting with, for example, you are, you are connecting with a, a, a donor that is called virtual, you're just connecting with the donor as an organization, but we talked about the individuals that work in that space, connecting with each other, being able to build uh, spaces, of, spaces of mutual understanding, trust, partnership, and, and, and even to create spaces for co-creation, okay, and dialogue, and even uh, uh, spaces for connecting and uh, 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 healing. It was very important to go to this aspect so that in this, to this end, we'd be able to create activists that are doing the work, knowing that they are in a good and better environment, and also donors and enablers that are able to understand the environment that activists work in, and they know that activists understand their environment as well. So it was a mutual understanding. It's not just about the activists understanding the donors, but the donors understanding the activists uh, uh, as well. Okay, so next slide, please. Thank you. So after months and months of conversations with our communities and amongst ourselves, we, we then co-created the campaign, this beautiful campaign that is called the uh, Solidarity Revolution Campaign. The reason of this, of this campaign was to break down the barriers that separate us and commit to empowered alliances where grassroots activists are valued, resourced, and supported. And there is a there is a huge emphasis on the on the aspect of being valued and supported as well. So it's not just about supporting them with resources to enable them to do their work, but it's also about about uh, 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 valuing um, the work that they do. Okay, so so that's the the purpose why we had created we had we had created um, um, the 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 campaign that we hoped each and every one of you that is part of this meeting would be able to to be part of this. Um, a brilliant uh, a campaign. So in building the, the campaign, we talked about the need for dialogue, trust, co-creation that I've talked about. Um, as you can see, there's beautiful art that kind of explains what uh, we're trying to talk about when you talk about mutual understanding and, 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 and uh, co-creation. There is a need now more than ever to break down barriers that, that separate us as activists and donors and allies and to commit to empowered alliances where everyone is valued, uh, resourced and supported. Um, so yeah, uh, moving on to my next slide. All right, thank you. So what we thought about is that if grassroots activists relationships with relations with donors are enabled without prescription and limit, they may achieve the highest possible change at individual and collective level. Um, I, I, I don't know if how many of you uh, agree with this, that the need for, for, for grassroots and donors to have a proper relationship would assist in achieving the highest and possible change at individual and collective level. If, that, if, if, if you don't agree with this statement or this, uh, this hypothesis, just do a thumbs down, but I'm sure everyone agrees you can do a thumbs up. Oh, my background is blurred, so that's why. Oh, it's a thumbs up I'm, I'm making. So you can use your, your emoji to do a thumbs up on your Zoom. So um, to get to the point where we wanted to get to, we are testing and promoting a grassroots-led spaces for dialogue, uh, human connection, radical solidarity, and relationship building between us, because it has to start from a point where we are all having conversations. And what better way uh, to have a conversation than a dialogue. We say, let's go for a dialogue. And so an example is in Zambia, um, where I come from, where we have the fourth natural wonder of, of the world, the Victoria Force. 
I'm just going to throw that there. Um, where I am, uh, we organized a few dialogues with grassroots activists. And last Friday, we also had a, a, a dialogue with, uh, and um, very interesting things were, were, were coming out. And we also had um, in Sudan, uh, my colleague uh, Sam um, she had a similar dialogue with local civil society uh, practitioners. Naro also uh, led a healing and well-being session with human rights defenders in the Philippines, and Tina had similar workshops with activists uh, in Madagascar. So I'm just going to play the videos, and then and then you can just listen to some of the findings that were there in the videos. Many organizations do not have their own buildings, and they do not have access to infrastructure like the internet. In here, it's a very big challenge. We tend to grab opportunity. But when we get the opportunity, then we forget the sustainability. Because uh, proposal may be for six months, one year old. Then after one year, what next? And they are not supported. They are not even given the, the freedom to be flexible in using the resources. This becomes one of the challenges that will affect most of us from applying. So much is focused at the last target that is the beneficiary but the institutions i think they are lacking they are lacking uh, they are lacking uh, direct support to build their capacity the landscape currently does not speak to the needs and does not respond to our areas of operation uh, i would recommend that the uh, the donors get to sit down with these uh, local uh, community-based organizations, they get to sit uh, with the startup organizations, they also get to sit with the young people that have the ideas and come up with a solution on how best they can work. The bigger gap that exists between CBOs and social movements is the lack of realization by the major players in the women sector and donors to recognize the, the, the stage of finding the issue. And that issue is that CBOs and social movements are not accommodated in the financial uh, payment uh, systems of donors and, and, and big players in, development, in the development space, and also just the financial systems. Generally, I think uh, some of the key points that were being mentioned by the activists in the two dialogues that were held both in Zambia and in, in uh, uh, Sudan uh, we all managed to to um, hear some of the key things that we're sharing. So in Zambia, we also had a, a similar, we, we had a, a um, dialogue that we had done with uh, donors that operate in Zambia and grassroots uh, change makers and activists. And one of the key um, overarching things that was coming out from the donors, especially uh, because we were we targeted uh, donors that were in a space to make decisions on behalf of their organizations. Uh, one of the key themes that was coming out was that most of the donors actually do understand to a larger extent some of the things that activists go through, but the people that formulate some of the policies that operate in their organizations are the ones that may not necessarily understand the work that activists uh, uh, do. Some of the donors, of course, were, were, um, were, were, were not aware of some of the challenges that activists go through, and some of the activists were also not aware of some of the the, the, the um, uh, uh, support constraints and pull that are there in the, in the policies that the, donor, the donors have. So the conversation was, was, was a very fruitful one. It yielded a lot of results. And there was actually a, 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 a nice atmosphere towards the end of the meeting. Because when we were sharing our, our, our meals, you could see them talking to each other and laughing which was a different case at the beginning of the meeting. And then funny enough, not that it was intended, the donors actually sat on one side of the room and the activists sat on the other side uh, of the room. So even just from the beginning of the meeting, you could tell that there, there's already a, a, a tendency or a narrative of, of divide that is created between the activists and the donors. It's just um, uh, money and user. That's usually the relationship that's there. So we were glad that at the end of the meeting, some of the key things that we learned, I think, were, were that there was just misconceptions about what the other part do. And the fact that people were able to sit in a meeting and talk and come up with some tangible results um, that uh, everyone agreed to take forward, which I'm sure we're going to share on the website uh, with, uh, as part of the report, um, was a, a big success for us. And so we are hoping that at the end of this campaign, or while this campaign is running, we are going to have a situation where we have better relationships 
um, uh, between donors and activists, and they begin to see each other as allies in the work for making the world a better place, as opposed to enablers and um, implementers. Um, that being said, I'm going to hand it over to um, Elise to also assist us in going through um, what we are doing today and how this jam session that we're having is part of testing the solidarity revolution um, um, agenda or campaign or part of testing what we want to achieve. Um, Elisa, over to you. Thank you so much, Nawa, and hello again, everyone. So, so nice to be here with you all in this global jam session. Uh, so yes, as Nawa was saying, last year we ran different local dialogues like in South Sudan, Zambia, Madagascar, Mexico, and Philippines, but also local jam sessions in Chile, Venezuela, Nigeria, Kenya, Ethiopia, uh, Indonesia, with magnificent activists having very different conversations and approaches, but always using a framework of fun, collective care, well-being, healing, and a little bit of um, ideation and brainstorming on what is our dream of our resourcing landscape? How do we wish to continue doing our work and finding the resources to do it in a way that doesn't take too much time or too much stress and complicate our agendas or changes or change completely our direction. Uh, and so that is why we wanted to also host today's global jam session with everyone here today. So you can experience what this close and intimate space designed 100% by activists and for activists to provide a platform for human connection, networking, uh, and discussion. We always hear that when we gather and we have a meeting, there's always a lot of head discussions, an agenda, an objective, a topic, and we uh, maintain relationships that are very professional or are always about a, a specific topic. But we wanted to break that bit and break down to have and build a human connection, say, you know what, yes, we are having a Lot of troubles facing lots of struggles in the systems that we're working we have a very important mission to to lead for human rights for social justice for the well-being of our communities but we're also humans we need also space for us to connect as humans to get to know each other to know what our needs our struggles and take care because an activist that is not okay as a human being his act hair or their activism will not be okay. So we want to have a holistic um, support system uh, where we have that uh, secured. So yeah, last year was really fun. And at the, how it went, it was that um, the jam session host selected participants around six to 10 participants from their communities, um, from all over their country. They met online, a few met in person, had a discussion and did some fun exercises, then ideate the research and landscape. And with the notes and outcomes, created some visual uh, outputs uh, that we're super happy to share with you. So this one, for example, is from Nigeria. Um, and the groups were very diverse, so always keeping in mind that the solidarity revolution is inclusive, is diverse diverse is fun and has youth voices, women, men, LGBTQI uh, representatives, disabilities, everyone, everyone is invited. And that's what also gives more richness to the conversation. Uh, and we're super happy also to share that this year we'll be running new jam sessions at the local level. So if you're interested in hosting one, uh, we have created a form uh, in English, Spanish, and French uh, and super, super happy to support you running those discussions with you, with your community. Um, and that's all from me. 